and my axe. No, Gimli, we don't want your axe. Your axe is a stupid double-headed axe, and dwarves are stu- Well, look, you have the other axe, which is okay, but that axe is crap! Greetings, I'm Shad, and I have not hid my opinions about the fantasy double-headed axe. Now, officially you would say double-bitted, uh, but the double-bitted axe refers to something else, which I tend to think of as the double-bitted wood axe. And uh, we're going we're gonna to talk about it, okay? Because even though I've mentioned tangentially that these don't work, in several videos like uh, the things fantasy you know, gets wrong about weapons, as I mentioned in this video, it's time to do a deep dive, a dedicated deep dive as to why double-headed axes like this LARP version I'm holding are stupid. It's very, they're very dumb, okay? Now, it's not to say they're useless. Uh, just like in many of my criticisms of weapons, you can pick up a rock and it is still a very useful weapon, all right? Doesn't mean it's a good weapon. The double-headed axe though, honestly, for what you could do with it, I would actually allow the concession that this is still a good weapon. It's just a very dumb one. It's very stupid still, even though you could do a lot of damage with it. And, uh, and so the fantasy warriors, people, whoever use these, they're gonna, you know, far more so than other weapons I've criticized before. This actually is still a good weapon, but there's a lot of dumb with it. You might be thinking, well, you know why? Well, this is the deep dive. We're gonna go into the reasons why it's dumb, why we don't see them as much historically, and giving some examples of other weapons, why, they get a, why they're get why they much more functional having a double blade on them. Um, like double-bladed swords, yes, they, so double-bladed weapons exist, but why double-headed axes in particular are dumb? Uh, and in actual fact, it's in been getting this. Why did I even get, if I dislike double-headed axes so much, why do I even have this? For the joke value, actually. Um, over on Game Nights, we uh, introduced uh, an epic weapon where, where having more edge was very appropriate because we get a bit more edgy over on Game Nights. And so to signify when we get edgy, there is a mighty, and this, this is it. The double-edged axe of it. The double-edged axe of edginess in the flesh. Well, we got it. And I purposely got a LARP one because uh, it's safer, okay? Especially when we're handing it around in the office and things. And seriously, like an actual weapon that was made out of metal, like it would be, that's one of the biggest problems, okay? I, uh, I was going to hold off until, but obviously, but it nearly doubles the weight. Now, it's not doubling the weight of the handle, and it's got this part, so it's increasing the weight nearly by 80%, though. But in getting it, and holding it, and then, you know, just when you hold something in your hand, it, it's not even the weight, but it's just kind of to think about how you'd fight with it and things like, this really is a dumb weapon. Before I get into it, though, I hope this all puts, people think that I hate Asian weapons. No, no, I hate dumb weapons, okay? If they're dumb, I'm going to call them out on it, and I don't care if it insults anyone's feelings or anything, because stupidity, stuff that is not functional, problems deserve to be called out. Look, it's actually a good quality to learn to, you know, actually accept valid criticism, it's benefited. It's blessed me in my life in learning how to do that. And I have had to learn it like, as a writer. Criticism has legitimately benefited me tremendously in my life to the point where I'm now a decent writer. I can write a good book that people really like. And it, because of that, I enjoy it. I like it when people point out errors because it's an error. I don't want errors in my writing. I want, to get, I want it to be good. Shouldn't that be good? Shouldn't we want good weapons? Wouldn't we want to use the best weapons possible? Like this weapon is dumb. It's stupid. And if you like double axes, fine. You're allowed to, I've always said you're allowed to like them, but don't say it's not dumb. Don't say that there isn't problems with it when there are. I'm gonna call and say out and say what those problems are, regardless of culture or people's feelings. And so anyway, back, back to this. But before we get there, I need to tell you about something else that will really help out your writing if you are a writer, but because you're watching this video, you're obviously interested in fantasy and weapons, and there's a good chance you might be a world builder or a role player. You could also be a game developer, and the thing that will help you tremendously is this video sponsor, Campfire Blaze, which is this brilliant writing assist program which enables you to do so much more. Now, I'm an author. There's my book, Chronicles of Everfall, Shadow of the Conqueror, and I know from experience that when I'm making my world building document and histories that carry the backstories, the races, the languages, the magic eyes, stuff like that, it becomes really hard to find out where you put things, the categories, and all that stuff. So 
Campfire Blaze enables you to sort everything with really easable links and, and connections where you can do full world histories, racial backgrounds, all the details you want. It has interactive maps and all these great features so you can just have all the world building stuff at your fingertips and it becomes so easy to look up things because it's all references, you can make links and all those great things as well. It has an inbuilt word processor so you can actually write your whole story. If you have access to a browser, you can access Campfire Blaze. It's all there. It has full privacy and one of the most flexible payment systems that you can get. You can opt to pay one off payments for the features you want. So you're not paying for features that you don't get or you could do a cheaper subscription service and so it's always there available when you need it at a more affordable price price. If you like writing, world building, role playing, game development, any number of things like that, you will get a tremendous use out of Campfire Blaze. It's brilliant. So please do go check it out. It is highly worthwhile. There is of course a link in the description below and thank you to Campfire Blaze for sponsoring this video. So where do double headed axes come from? Well, I think there's uh, more than just one origin that has made them popular in fantasy. Now the most prominent one of course is that double headed axes do exist double bitted axes for wood chopping. Why would you want a double bitted axe for wood chopping? I believe the answer is sharpness. If one head gets sharp and you have a lot of chopping to do in the day, instead of having to go away and sharpen again, you can flip the other side. Now, you might say, well, there's the answer. This is what justifies double headed combat axes. If it did, we would have seen vastly more double headed combat axes historically than we do today. Are there any? I am going to say not really. There are some uh, reference points that indicates perhaps there are ornamental double-headed axes that we see in some museums and stuff. Ornamental. There is, uh, when I say a couple images, I've only ever seen one or even two images of what is a double-headed axe that seems to be used in combat. Now, I'm a big advocate that we can learn a lot from pictorial resources uh, from the medieval period. But we of course need to put it into context as well and uh, one of the ways that we can get an idea of something it was truly prominent is the amount of times we see it in art okay if uh, something is depicted in medieval artwork to a fairly large degree across different cultures and time periods that gives us far more I uh, have validity to say this is actually done in the past my big you know con no, shouldn't be controversial now um, uh, opinion that medieval archers shot on the outside of the bow over the thumb. Uh, the reason why is because we see it everywhere in art. How much do we see double headed axes? Not much actually, like I've only seen one or two. If there is more evidence than this, I will f change my opinion instantly. Say look, perhaps they're more prominent. But just going off from all the medieval art that I've seen and the dearth of double headed axes that there are, even if there is more visual depictions of double headed axes in medieval art than I am currently aware of, that they are still underrepresented in regards to medieval weapons in art, vastly so, so they would not be common. And I believe they are either not very common or weren't even present. And this one, because if this is only one or two artworks, I would say, it's probably actually more likely that that is an artistic embellishment because of how rare it is everywhere else. We see double-headed axes in modern day art, fantasy, and this is where we come to the other reason that I think has created the popularity of the double-headed axe, and it's that they look cool. They do, okay? Humans, there is a natural aesthetic appreciation for symmetry. We have a natural appreciation for something that is symmetrical and balanced and it looks good and you've got these interesting curves and stuff like that and uh, and so because like really really what axe legitimately looks better one seems unbalanced when i see this that like this is a day now it's a fantasy foam day it's not real all right i'll get a real one eventually but when i see a proper made Danax, what I see is functionality and utility. And that gives me a bit of a buzz. It's like, whoa, I can see how that could be used. That'll be used well. And I actually have an appreciation that even almost triggers the aesthetic appreciation in my brain for something that is well made and has proper practical functionality to it, all right? So much so that when it's a bit on the flip side, when I see something that doesn't have much functionality, where its design is going to affect its utility, it legitimately looks worse as a result. It's interesting how that has evolved in my analytical mind. Um, but if you don't have that, okay, when you look at these two, I can legitimately see why people would say this one looks better. Look, this one is like off oddly balanced and stuff. And this is this is balanced. It's symmetrical. It just completes it. Like this is like this is like an incomplete picture. You're just like, you know, 
I get it, I get it. And it's because of that that I think they've become really popular in fantasy. And yes, like, I actually don't mind embellishments for style if it's not at the detriment of functionality. That's where I started to draw the line. I think fantasy armor, awesome. Let's at least try and make it functional. Fantasy swords, awesome. Spikes, embellishments, designs, patterns, it's great. As long as it's not impractical, increases the weight too much. And that's exactly what's happening with a double-headed axe, because one of the biggest problems, I've already mentioned in this video, it increases the weight might nearly 80%, if, especially if it's a mirror copy of what's the front. And what are you getting in return of that increase in weight? Not much extra function, all right? Now you might say, well, what if the actual front axe gets blunted? That was what seems to have justified actual double-bitted woodcutting axes. So yes, that justifies double-headed axes. Not really. All right, the reason being, the blade of a combat axe is coming in less contact with stuff than the blade of a woodcutting axe. A woodcutting axe, you are chopping and chopping and chopping and chopping and chopping. And chopping. Like, that axe head is getting in contact with wood a lot throughout the day. If you've got a whole day of wood chopping in front of you, you've got a lot of axe contact happening, okay? And that will blunt an axe head. Contrast that to a medieval context, like for a combat axe, even in battle, the axe head is gonna come in contact with your targets far less than if you're chopping, like literally, chopping wood, you chop, like it's again and again. In combat, you, like if you've got an opponent, yeah, you might lay into them, but then you have to find another opponent. There's gaps in between, and then you can't maintain it all day. An axe blade is also far more durable and robust than, say, a sword blade, and so damage to an axe head is less common than on other weapons. And even if it gets slightly dulled here and there, okay, you're still gonna kill someone with it. Now, contrast this to a slightly dulled axe head, okay? If you swing with a slightly dulled axe head into a tree or whatever you're chopping, right, and it's mildly dull, that could increase the work you're going to need to do in the day by double, okay? Because if your penetration on the cutting axe is half because it's blunt, that's a big problem. Now contrast that into combat. Knocking someone on the head with a slightly dulled axe will most likely kill someone as much as if it was really sharp, okay? Axes are devastatingly lethal. And this is also includes armor, okay? Because uh, axes are great anti-armor weapons because of the weight behind them. Now guess what? You will do as much damage to someone's head through a helmet with a sharp axe as you will with a blunt axe because it's not gonna chop through metal. And so sharpness is actually not nearly as crucial for a combat axe than it is for a woodcutting axe. A certain level of sharpness is beneficial, but most of the time you're still going to kill the person. And so the concern that you might have a slightly dulled axe after a certain amount of swings is nowhere near as problematic as if you have a dulled axe for wood chopping because you get far more significant benefit and utility out of a really sharp woodcutting axe than you do actually out of a really sharp combat axe. Very interesting contrast, that. So, so again, what are you getting out of the extra axe head? It will do the exact same thing as the main axe head does. Uh, and sharpness, again, not gonna be much, so again, about the same thing. So if you can do everything you need to do with the main axe head, and the back axe head is just duplicating it and not giving you anything extra, it is far more a detriment and hindrance to the weapon than a benefit. It just makes it heavier and harder to use. Axes are heavier enough, especially with the weight being focused on the top end. And so adding another axe head on the back, which is just doing nothing, is ridiculous. In fact, it's pretty stupid. It's a stupid weapon design. What's interesting, again, because historical people, they were smart. They knew what's up. They realized when they have an axe that, oh, there is another side to this, that, you know, you could hit people at the back end, maybe, maybe a concussive hit, but, I mean, is there something that we could put on the back end that allows us to do things that the front, the main cutting head, can't do? Yes! Yes, they did! A good old spike! A spike allows you to do so much more that just you, that you can't do with an axe head by itself. You can still do a lot with the axe head, but if you come across particularly tough armor, what if you notice your strikes have been kind of glancing off the mail a bit too much? Oh, brother! Again, a good solid hit with that spike! They can do so much more, and this weapon is now more versatile and deadly than it ever was before. And amazingly, this spike, it only increases the weight by maybe, what, 10, 20% if that? No, not a problem at all. I'd happily accept the extra little bit of weight. Maybe I could even make the axe head a tiny bit smaller to compensate. And now I have a more versatile, deadly weapon as a result. Evil people are bloody geniuses! I've been sucked into this one, remember? Okay, in, in my youth, yeah, double-blade axes. Oh good, let's go, no. 
no. Say no to too much head, okay? You don't need a double-headed axe. One head, perfectly enough. We actually see this go even further because there's another part on the striking end of an axe that doesn't have anything on. What if you put, what if you put a spike on? A spike! A big old spike on the top and the back and it is, it's like a spear, it's like a pick, and it's an axe still! It's a deadly weapon! And we, we two-handed version? Say hello to the halberd! <laughs> like, these are such viciously optimized and deadly weapons where they get all, you know, use it, it's so, you know. This is what I, I the appreciation of just how functional and effective these are. Oh, lot, I love it. So, what else can we say about the double-headed axe? Well, uh, you know, I think I want to do a deep dive. I want to explore all the things. So, is there any advantage that you can get out of it? What about striking with the back edge? Because you could strike with the back edge of a sword. So you can really see that a sword gets very few detrimental impacts on its functionality by having a back edge. Because it has a back end anyway, and all you need to do is sharpen it, and you're not losing anything. You're not adding additional weight to get it or anything. And so, there's that. There are some interesting things that um, affect the overall, you know, design, the geometry of the blade by having a back edge. And it relates to the thickness and, and the angle of the edge itself. If you have a back edge, usually it means it needs to be thinner, otherwise you would need to increase the angle of the blade too much. I'll talk about this in, you know, that, that has a very significant effect on cutting performance. I have a video. Not enough people have seen that video. It's a good fun little video to show in you know, a real world application of how edge angle affects. So there's an interesting contrast between double and single edge blades, even on swords, but the payoff, the, the exchange of those things are almost equivalent in what you can deal with, with the advantages you get. Because with a sword, when you strike with one edge, okay, and if you want to reverse it and swing to strike from the other side, striking with the back edge is actually a faster motion than if I needed to. So if I, if I strike with this and I want to strike on the other side, if I have to reorient, keep the edge facing forward and do that, that's actually a longer motion than just spinning like that. So if I hit there, just spin there, that's a faster motion than if I hit there, and I have to reorient the forward blade always facing forward. It gives you more versatility in the angles that you can cut from. So if you go in for a thing, you can always strike with the back edge. And so you have far more options on how you can strike with a sword. Would you get these type of advantages with a double bladed ax? I say, not enough to justify them. Let me tell you why. Axes are already a more heavy and cumbersome weapon than swords. Swords can be very agile, very light, very elegant. Redirecting the direction of an axe takes an effort already. So much so that the effort that you need to redirect an axe is almost equivalent if you needed to redirect it anyway to use a back edge if it was there. And I'm seeing almost an equivalent movement in terms of speed, and you're not really getting much anyway. Also, here's another interesting thing. Because axes are heavy, you can use them easier by separating your hands far more so than you can on a sword. Look at how far my hands are apart here. And so on the recovery swings, I can grab it further up to go again. Now, it is vastly more difficult to utilize the back edge when my hands are this far apart, because crossing over, look what I need to, it's different if my hands are close and I can cross over as easy as that, but crossing over to use a back, back edge cut when my hands are this far apart, it's like, <laughs> it's much more difficult. So already, just the natural kind of rest position of two-handed axes limits your ability to use the back edge a lot, because look, if I'm here and I want to strike with the back edge, is that any difference to just doing that? In actual fact, it took more motion and movement to realign the back edge than simply having the front edge to hit already. So in some cases, utilizing a back edge on an ax is a more complex movement, a movement that takes longer than if you just keep using the front edge. Okay, so are there any strikes that will be faster with an extra ax head for a backside strike? So if you go down like this, and perhaps you do that, okay? Okay, you could probably do it. Uh, would it take much to realign? Actually, not, not that motion, not really. I mean, the amount of effort I need to push to just move an axe already slows it down that any you know, equivalence of switching is a null point. Here's another thing why swords are benefited from having two edges where not necessarily an axe. Edge alignment. There are some strikes in which you will get cleaner edge alignment when striking with the back edge than when striking with the front. Like look at look at the angle I need to hold my head up to strike with the front edge of this. It's an awkward angle, okay? But if I do it with the back edge, 
Look at that. I can raise my arm higher, I can lean my sword down, I can strike with the back edge much, much easier. And so for more effective edge alignment, I am benefited by the double edged sword being able to strike with the back edge and trying to do a front edge cut from this position, which is really awkward. Try yourself. You got a sword, pick it up, try and strike with the front edge, forward, I hit a cut, coming down strike like that. It's really awkward, but on the back edge, clean, simple, easy. This is really important because if you get edge alignment screwed up on a sword strike, that can legitimately not injure your opponent, even with a sword. You can make contact, the edge alignment is off and they just got even thick clothing, you won't cut as well. Edge alignment is vastly less important with an axe than a sword. If you get edge alignment off just with an axe strike, so much force is still going through that it's got very high chances of still injuring and incapacitating your opponent. I'm not saying edge alignment is not important with an axe, it is, okay, but it's less important. And there are less positions that you can strike from holding an axe where you need very specific biomechanics to do effectively because you don't strike, like, like, axes are so heavy, you don't get the option of really doing these fancy high kind of strike, there's almost nil power generation. These are heavy, you need to do big, strong strikes with this. And so most of the primary strikes from the axe, when I'm just analyzing it casually here, almost get no added benefit of having the option to do the same strike on the back side of the blade. This again. So you're not getting much. An axe simply is a very different weapon to a sword. And so, as I mentioned, there are just less strikes that you could do better with the back edge, having the option to hit like that, where you can just hit like that. Like really, I'm going through them all and I'm not seeing back edge strikes to be very beneficial on double headed axes and it seems like historically medieval people they found that as well because we see so few of them and so these are all the reasons i can think of. i mean can you think of any reason at all that might justify having a second axe head to get a double headed axe and even if you can i would still say well does that really make them worthwhile do you get enough benefit to justify the additional weight and the compass, and also justify not doing something vastly better, like putting a spike on the back end, which is so, which allows you to do more. So does it really make it better than a spike? I can't think it does, but if you can, share them in the comments, I'd love to read them. But when I look at it, for the reasons I've mentioned, double-bladed, double-headed axes are dumb. They're stupid weapons. If you like them, that's fine, I guess, you know. Still, I like my fantasy a bit more realistic. It's just me, it's just me, it's just me. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. And of course, I hope to see you on the next video here on Shadowversity. So until that time, farewell. And you know, I am holding the double edge active edginess. And it's so hard, because it's so overpowering. Cut! Oh, oh no, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it.